Hello everybody and welcome back to this channel. This is part two in the video series for funeral blues. In this video we'll be covering some of the exam past questions for paper two English home language, the poetry section, and we'll also be looking at how to answer some of the questions. As I've said before, if you are a grade 12 learner and you are struggling with the poetry section, it's not that you don't understand the content of the poem, which I went through in the previous video, but sometimes it's just that learners struggle with how to answer the question or what to write. And as I've said before, my biggest tip for all the grade 12 learners is that you need to look at the mark allocation, okay? So over here, if it's two marks, if the question is, I just want to zoom in a little bit. If the question uh, is for two marks, then you need to give two facts, two points, and ideally two sentences, okay? You can't give one point and expect to get the mark, okay? If you haven't already, please give this video a like, comment at the end of the video, and please subscribe to this channel. And lastly, don't forget to share with all your friends, especially those who perhaps are struggling or anybody who wants to improve their mark or anybody who just wants to know how to achieve a better mark and improve their answering for Paper 2, English Home Language, the poetry section. All right, let's get into it. Number one, account for the speaker's desire to stop all the clocks in line one. So remember account for in English home language refers to explain. If you need to account for, you need to explain the speaker's desire to stop all the clocks. So in other words, you need to explain why does the speaker want to stop all the clocks, right? So, um, my biggest advice to you guys is always to stop. So I'm sure I said this in the previous video, stop. Just gonna type it out for you guys. And stop means state the obvious point, right? So you stop whenever you answer a question and you always give that first point, that obvious point. So how do you do that? Right here, I've done that over there, okay? Stop, sorry, stop. The clocks indicate the normality and the passing of time. We know that what do you use a clock for? What do you use a watch for? To check the time, right? So s clocks indicate, I keep uh, wanting to mix up uh, stop and clocks. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, clocks indicate the passing of time, right? So why does a speaker want to stop all the clocks? By stopping the clocks, the speaker wants other people's normality, right? To seize so that they can relate to his grief, right? So stop all time uh, across the world because I want everybody to join in and experience and relate to my grief of the my beloved after my beloved's death. Right. So yeah. Second point for the second mark, the death of his beloved or his loved one is so momentous that he feels that time and the world cannot continue. Okay. So what impression? So remember when you see the question. What impression it means, what idea, what is your understanding? So, what idea can we gather from the words muffled and moaning in lines 3 and 5, right? And what does it reveal about the speaker's state of mind? Okay, so the muffled drums create a mournful and sol solemn feeling that expects, expresses the speaker's grief. What is his state of mind? He's in extreme grief, right? The moaning of the... Aeroplanes announcing that he is dead echoes the pain that the speaker is feeling, right? So both has got to do, what is his state of mind? He's in extreme grief. How do we know that? The muffles drum and the moaning, it creates a solemn um, sound, okay? Next one. Number two, what are the imperatives? Imperatives means the... Um, the commands, right? So I just want to slide up all the way to the poem. Stop the clocks. Cut off the telephone. Prevent the dog from barking. Silence the pianos. Bring out the coffin. Let the mourners come. Those are all the different. Oops. 
those are all the different commands all right so let's just go back so how do the imperatives in stanza one contribute um, to your overall understanding of the speaker's feelings so the use of the imperatives reveals the speaker's adamance like insistent behavior stop state the obvious point if you command somebody you are uh, or you present a command you are being adamant you are being insistent right so you explain that right and the second uh, in the second um, point for the second mark you need to say how it contributes to the overall understanding of the speaker's feelings usually guys these are often two parts to the question right so you need to answer both second part the speaker is feeling intense grief and sorrow you should all know that by now and wants everything that indicates the measurement of life to be stopped okay explain the effectiveness of moaning in line five i just want to move down the marks stop state the obvious point the sound of the airplanes engines are described to be moaning the speaker's grief is so immense it's so intense that even the airplanes flying in the sky share his grief that is the effectiveness of it okay okay next one account for the use of onomatopoeia in the term moaning so the term moaning expresses the severe Excuse me, the severe level of suffering experienced by the speaker. The onomatopoeia suggests that even the aeroplanes are grieving for the deaths. So we've gone over that already. As the sound is an outward display of sorrow and lamentation. So as if the aeroplanes are also making a moaning sound like, and they are also grieving. Okay, so that's quite straightforward, guys. Those two, it's kind of one in the same question. Okay, account for the speaker wanting to struggle the message on the sky uh, two marks I'll just move this down so account for explain the speaker wanting to scribble the message he is dead on the sky the image of the word scribble across the sky for all to see displays how the speaker wants to project his grief to his entire surrounding so that the world should mourn with him okay two points Project his grief to everybody. Um, the world must mourn with him. Two points there. Okay. Suggest for the reason for the use of the capital letters. Now this is easy. The capital letter is bigger than the rest. Right. It stands out. So that kind of gives you a clue. Right. The capital letters indicate the importance of the loved one in the speaker's life, and and emphasizes the intensity. Of of the grief he is experiencing it creates the impression that the person who has died is the person of significance within society and thus deserving the outpourings of public grief okay and this is another point that you could have added you want to interchange with capital letters draw the reader's attention to the stark finality of death but it's only a two mark question so you only give two points not three points okay it's not unnecessary to write too much also in the exam you don't want to waste time okay explain the effectiveness of the term scribbling scribbling refers to the quick and untidy form of writing therefore it appears as though the speaker wants airplanes to hastily announce to the world the death of his beloved okay put a uh, creep bows around the white necks of the doves what would the purpose of creep bows around the necks what would be the purpose of the creep bows around the necks of the public doves? The creep bows would denote that the doves have been decorated in an artificial uh, sh show of mourning. And I would say for the second mark, also to indicate to the public that they should mourn the death of the speaker's beloved right, for the second point what imagery do the public doves and the traffic policeman in line 8 reveal about the speaker the speaker's loss is so overwhelming 
that he feels a public acknowledgement must be observed by the public tells and the traffic policeman. So that is what I added there. Okay. This elevates the status of the deceased to the public figure deserving such recognition. So remember, remember his grief initially is contained with his home surroundings and then it becomes public for he wants everybody else to join in on the grief. Okay. Right, this is a nice question. He was my north, my south, my east, my west. Discuss the effectiveness of this image in the context of the poem. Okay, so the deceased was like, so remember, you need to break it up. It's three marks, three points, right? So, first, you need to say for the first point what is happening in his life. So, the, he was my north, my south, my east, my west. This means the deceased was like a compass to the speaker, providing the speaker with guidance in life. The four compass points emphasize that the disease was an important part of every aspect of his life. It wasn't just his north, it was his north, south, east and west. Everything, every part of his life, right? All directions. And now the loved one is dead, the speaker feels lost and without direction. This image is effective because, right? So don't forget, effective means does the image of the compass points fit in with the speaker, the, the beloved being part of um, every aspect of the speaker's life? That this metaphor, does it fit in together? Effectiveness, does it correspond? Does it go together? Right? Does the comparison being made, does it fit in together? Effective. Is it appropriate? Right? And yes, it is. Because like a compass, the disease was dependable and the one whom the speaker could oh sorry disease was dependable sorry and the one person on whom the speaker could always rely i'm just gonna add the one person just to make it more um, excuse me to make it more um understandable okay or understanding number nine refer to lines nine to eleven Right. So remember, if you get a question like this and they don't give you the entire quotation, I would go back up to our poem and I would highlight 9 to 11. Right. So I would read it again for myself. He was my north, my south, my east, my west, my working week, and my Sunday race, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. So to go back to the question, it will be stopped now. Account for, explain the repetition of the possessive pronoun my. Okay, three marks, three points. The speaker uses the repetition of the possessive pronoun my throughout lines 9 to 11 to emphasize. Many students would say that, many students would say that um, repetition is used to emphasize. But to emphasize what? You need to explain what. Okay? So whenever you get a repetition question, it's always to emphasize something. But what exactly are you emphasizing? Okay? So you need to explain that. So to emphasize the sense of belonging and possession that was shared within the relationship with his beloved, they're saying, my, my, maybe this person belongs to me. Right? Um, a, my position, right? Due to the beloved not being alive, the repetition of my emphasizes this devastating sorrow and loss as the reader understands the intimacy that they once shared. Okay. Refer to line 12. I thought love would last forever. I was wrong. Why does this, what, what does the speaker realize? The speaker is feeling despair, hopelessness, as the speaker is confronted with the reality of death. He is suddenly made more uh, made aware that love, that the love I share was not fixed and would not last forever. Okay. Let me discuss the shift of the imagery within stanza one, two, and three. This should actually be a three-mark question. 
okay in stanza one the speaks are now need to say a shift right in stanza one something is happening in stanza two something is happening in stanza three another thing is happening what is the difference between the three stanzas how does it shift between each other in stanza one the speaker initially experienced grief domestically what does that mean in his home he experienced the grief why because he mentions the telephone the dog and the clocks right this reveals that the speaker's emotions are controlled okay however in stanza two the speaker's grief is no longer controlled as he experiencing as he is experiencing a great feeling of despair and this is evident as the speaker makes reference to public imagery it refers to airplanes and policemen okay and lastly in stanza three i just want to add this ultimately the speaker's grief moves to a universal grief right all over right star sun moon and ocean shown at the extent of the deep loss and so in the extent of the deep loss he has experienced and that his sorrow cannot be contained okay so guys i hope you understand i'm sure i went over this in the powerpoint sense of one two and three contain grief right no longer contain it's public and then universal all over okay refer to lines 13 to 14 the stars are not wanted now cook out everyone back up the moon and dismantle the sun discuss how these lines contribute to the mood of the poem Okay, so mood, guys, this means how does the words in the poem make me feel, right? So surely we are all empathetic and sympathetic people, so we should feel some sort of, um, I don't want to say sympathy for him, but we should all feel some sort of um, sadness, although we're not going to use sadness. Yeah, it says somber, but we'll get there now. The speakers now remember discuss how the lines contribute now you need to first discuss the lines for the two marks what is happening in the lines so the speaker is experiencing intense despair and grief due to the loss of his beloved the speaker makes hyperbolic commands right hyperbole exaggerated commands and this reveals that the speaker is out of touch from reality as it is impossible to eradicate the stars moon and sun Right? You can't destroy the stars, moon, and the sun. This contributes to the overall somber mood okay, of the poem as the hyperbolic commands enable the reader to experience the speaker's grief as well. Okay. Um, B. Discuss the effectiveness of the speaker's use of light imagery. Okay. The speaker wants the entire... Remember, light imagery means the stars and the moon uh, and the sun. It all projects light. Okay? So, the speaker wants the entire universe to come to an end. All sources of light need to be extinguished because to him, everything is dark and depressing. Okay? He wants all aspects of nature to disappear as it is now inconsequential to him. Okay? Number C. Okay, discuss the significance of the term dismantle in line 14 in the poem's context. So, the speaker makes a command to dismantle the stars, the moon and sun. However, this act would be considered unrealistic. The use of the term dismantle reveals that the speaker is despondent to the real world due to the loss of his beloved okay guys let's continue so this one is a nice question because i basically showed you how to structure these three more questions so um the stars it's basically the same um lines again but let's just go up 13 to 16. okay let's just read 
The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to to any good. All right, what's going on here? Why do I keep doing that? So remember I said guys, whenever you get a question like this and you see the ellipsis or you don't see the full uh, quotation, go back to your poem. Don't be lazy. Read all the lines that you need to, that the questions are that the question is referring to. Okay? You're not gonna remember everything out of your head. I don't, you guys won't, okay? Um, we are only human, right? Nobody's gonna remember the entire poem out of your head. So go back and read. So Critically comment on how the speaker's tone in these lines reinforces the central message of the poem. So, three marks, three points. What is the meaning of these lines? What is the tone? Link all three all together by referring to the message of the poem. Right? Critically comment on I hope you guys can see it. It's quite bright. Let me just make this another color. Critically comment on how the speaker's tone in these lines reinforces the central message of the poem. So, three points here. These lines. What, are the, what is being said in the lines? Let's state the obvious point. Right? Then you say, excuse me, critically comment on how the speaker's tone. So, what is the tone? First state what the lines are, right? what is the tone, and then link all together. So I will actually, I don't know why this is here. So, let's first explain what's happening in the lines. After the death of his beloved, the speaker cannot find any happiness or hope within life. Due to the speaker's despair, the poems... Um, Guys, this is all over the place here. Okay. Okay. So in lines. 13 to 16. The speaker reveals his despair due to him being Distraught, and he therefore requests that all sources of light are distinguished as there is no longer any hope left in the world. These lines reveal that the speaker's tone is one of complete despair. Right? And the last point, due to the speaker's despair, the poem sent the message reveals to the reader what intense feeling of loss can cause when one loses someone close to them and the reader is reminded that life must go on after death okay so guys, sorry about that. I just wanted to make it more clear for everybody watching. So, 
Critically comment on how the speaker's tone in his lines reinforces the central message of the poem. How to structure the answer? Mark number one, what is the meaning of the lines? Mark number two, what is the tone? And mark number three, link all together by referring to the message of the poem. So, in lines 13 to 16, you will say what is happening. The speaker reveals his despair due to him being distraught. Excuse me. And he therefore requests that all sources of light um, are distinguished because you know there is no longer hope in the in the world, I would say, in his world. These lines reveal that the speaker's tone is one of complete despair. What is the tone? And the last point, due to the speaker's despair, the poem's central message reveals to the reader what intense what the intense feeling of loss can cause when one loses someone close to them. I will take this out, it's redundant. And the reader is reminded that life must go on after death. Comment on the diction used in these lines to convey the speaker's tone. So, this is another three mark question, guys. So you're looking at the last stanza. So I would say, um, comment on how the diction in these lines conveys the speaker's tone. Two examples of diction quoting, and then one example of what the tone is. So we know that the tone is complete despair. Despair means hopelessness. So. I'm just going to go over um, two points. Okay. So there's a lot of points given here, but you only give two. Okay. Okay. The speaker is so distraught, devastated, and I don't know if the word sad. Right. And in grade 12, don't use the word happy and sad. The speaker is so distraught and devastated that he requests that all sorts of light, how do you know this? By the word star and moon are distinguished because there is no longer any hope in the world. Um, the cosmic elements, okay, let's, let's take that thing out. The world's natural beauty should be destroyed, pour over and sweep up because his world is bleak. And in the last part, the tone of the final stanza is complete despair. Okay. Two diction, one for tone. How does the concluding line, for nothing now can ever come to any good, contribute to the central idea of the poem? Okay. The last line reveals the death of the speaker's beloved has devastated the speaker to the point he feels without any purpose in life, right, and unable to see any good. The concluding line reveals the central idea of the poem because the last line emphasizes the finality of death and how there's nothing good that can come from death. Critically comment on how the images in the final stanza convey the speaker's attitude towards death of his loved one. The speaker wants the entire universe to come to an end as he states that he wants all sources of light to be extinguished because to him everything is now Everything is now dark and depressing. He wants all of nature to be to disappear as it is now inconsequential to him. The hyperbolic statements emphasize the intensity of his pain at the death of his loved one. Number 16. What impression is created of the speaker by the diction used in the final stanza? The instructions in stanza 4. Put, pack, dismantle, pour and sweep are exaggerated and unrealistic. You can't do all those things to the stars, the moon, and the sun. It shows the speaker's inability to deal with the reality of loss. And number 17, based on your knowledge of the entire poem, discuss the e appropriateness, effectiveness of the title Funeral Blues. Okay. The term funeral is a form, so you have to break it up. The term funeral is a formal service held for someone deceased, and in this contains a context, sorry, it is the speaker's beloved. The term blues refers to a depressed or sorrowful feeling, which is, which is appropriate since the poem is about grief. Furthermore, the term blues can also apply to the music genre blues, which is characterized by a soulful and melancholy mood. 
um, the three eights for the listener. And the last question, identify the tone of in the sperm, substantiate your, your response by referring to diction. Um, don't know why this is here. So we know the, the tone of this poem is one of complete despair. And how do we know that? We need to refer to diction. Two points. So any two words you can quote here from this poem. Any two words, right? To support your answer. There's so many that I've gone over in the previous PowerPoint. So, okay, everybody. Thanks once again for watching this video. If you haven't yet, please give this video a thumbs up. Please leave a comment for me in the comment section. Do you perhaps now understand a little bit better or a little easier how to answer your poetry questions or how to tackle the questions, right? If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm going to um, continue and go over all the poems for English Home Language uh, Paper 2 that you need to know, all the different poems. And lastly, don't forget to share, okay? There might be people out there just like yourself that would like extra assistance so please share this channel with him i will see you guys over at video number three which is how to write the funeral blues literature essay so once again thanks for watching everybody and i'll see you soon